It's rookie draft season, but don't forget about those all-important veterans. I'm going to walk you through four players, two players you should be looking to buy, two players you should be looking to ship out at cost and help you move your dynasty teams forward. That is right. We're going to walk through some buys, some sells. Let's kick it off straight away. Zimir White, he is a massive buy for me. He has been for the last three months. I truly believe that this Raiders offense thinks that Zimir White can be a true three-down workhorse. After all, he, he handled the load at the back end of last season when Josh Jacobs went down. He was the running back nine through the final four weeks of the season, averaging over 15 points per game. There's no competition for him right now. They brought in Alexander Matson. Anyone who watched him last year knows he's done. They brought in Dylan Loeb in the draft. Yeah, he's a competent third down back, but I don't think he's going to be enough as a rookie to keep Zamir White off the field. So Zamir White probably not going to set any records, probably not going to be a superstar for fantasy, but as a running back too, as a flex option, he is going to help you. And at cost, it's an easy smash for me. You can see right now, I've got him valued around the 112, but I don't think you need to pay that. As you can see, real real prices up on the board there. Keep trade cut and got him at 206, DLF at the 212. I think those DLF trade values are a little bit delayed to catch up with the fact that they didn't really add anyone in the draft. So I think that that value will probably boost as we start to see main numbers drift into their valuations. But yeah, if you can pay a, a mid to early second for Zamir White, I think that's a really smart play for an, a contending team that needs just that little bit of help in the running back spot to get you over the over the hump as such. One other player I'm looking to buy as a contender, Cooper Cup. It feels like just because Pukunakura is the shiny new thing, everybody's already forgotten about what Cooper Cup is and what he did. But over the final five weeks of the season last year, he was the wide receiver seven. He is fully healthy heading into this season. Matthew Stafford had one of the best seasons of his career last year and has had a fully healthy offseason. This Rams offense could be absolutely phenomenal. And we know just what a cheat code to Cooper Cup can be when he is there. And the price is absolutely astronomical. I would pay it happily, the 110 in current drafts, but keep play truck cut have got him worth an early second. DLF have got him worth a late first. So if you've got a late first, I'm easily happy sending that for Cooper Cup. But maybe you can look to pivot off some younger players. Maybe you can send a, a Keon Coleman or, or someone like that that's younger, unproven. As everybody in Dynasty is looking to get younger, go and buy those those young ascending assets and sell off the, the aging veterans. If you're a contender, now's the time to sweep in because I think Cooper Cup's value, you know, one year as a top 12 wide receiver would e easily pay off that price you'd have to pay to acquire him. So I think that's a really nice point to go and buy. And certainly the kind of guy that can give you wide receiver one, if not wide receiver two production for a fraction of the cost that you'd have to go and pay. So as a contender, go and ask that question around Cooper Cup. If you are here, though, and you've not hit that subscribe button, we are closing in on 2,100 subscribers. Do us a favor, hit that little thumbs up button, hit the subscribe. Tommy's absolutely killing it with best of all season, and there'll be more Dynasty content coming your way. We're going to get negative now, move on to some sales. Devon Achain, look, the, the ceiling is absolutely phenomenal. He scored almost 100 points in a three-week stretch in the middle of the season. However, through the other eight contests he plays, he scored 90.9. He averaged 11.4 points per game in those contests, which is essentially the running back 33 last year. That's not going to get it done. And yes, maybe in best ball, you can afford to have that sort of boom bust option sat on your roster. In, in managed leagues, I struggle to enjoy that decision of can I trust him? I also think that this is going to be more of a committee than people realise. Raheem Mostert's not going anywhere. They obviously drafted Jalen Wright, and this is still going to be a pass-first offence. That's where that majority of those points are going to be scored. Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle. They've continued to add with Odell Beckham and Malik Washington in the draft. So I'm nervous about what the Van H can be, and I don't know if I can pay the prices that he's currently being valued as potentially a top-five running back. As you can see here, I've got him valued at the 110, which that's what I would pay to acquire him. But keep, keep trade cut, I've got him as the 107. DLF, I've got him even higher at the 105. So if you can sell for that mid first, 
I'd happily do that. Equally, if you can pivot off a chain for, you know, a wide receiver that's maybe got a little bit more of a shelf life, a little bit more stability, or maybe you can even take a punt at the running back position. Can you get someone whose stock's taking a little bit of a hit right now can you get Kyron Williams plus can you tear down to the guy I was talking about earlier can you get Zimir White plus perhaps a second for Devon Chain? I think that would be a sensible move to make the next guy the tight end one for most but not for me I just am concerned that Sam Laporta was too touchdown reliant and he's going to struggle moving forward he's 25% of his points last year came from touchdowns he scored 10 touchdowns No other wide uh, tight end in the top 12 saw over 20% of their points come from touchdowns. I think that there is a serious concern that if he sees touchdown regression, it could massively impact him as a a fantasy asset and what he can do on the field. I don't see a path to him seeing more targets. He had 120 targets as a rookie. I think that this Lions offense is going to look to become more multiple. They're going to look to add in more weapons over the next few years. And I just think if you can get true tight end one value for him i think that's really smart because this is not a true tight end one that we are used to you know mark andrews travis kelsey when they were in their heyday they were scoring seven eight points per game over a replacement player sam report last year was 4.5 it's not the difference in the positional value that you think you are getting from the Titan one part of that is because he's not as good as Kelsey was in his hype part of that is because there's now more options that replacement level tight end has improved they're no longer giving you seven eight points per game they're now giving you 10 11 12 so I just think where his price is there's a lot of risk involved in that and young tight ends I've done the study, over 60% of young tight ends aged under 25 in the top 24 in Dynasty, reducing value from season to the next. So 60% chance Sam Laporta sees a drop in his value this time next year, and that's too much for me to risk at his current price. Talking of current price, as you can see there, I've got him as worth the 107, but both Keep Trade Cut and DLF have got him as the 103. If you can get a top four, top five pick for him in drafts right now, I would absolutely smash that. If you can give me Malik Neighbors straight up for Sam Laporte, I'm doing that every day of the week. If you give me Drake May, even Jaden Daniels, that is an easy deal I'm looking to make right now. And, you know, Keep, keep Trade Cut, DLF, they're telling you you can go out and make that trade. If you're looking to pivot, I would look to maybe, you know, maybe you can still be competitive and get a significant asset. Could you get Evan Ingram plus a mid to late first? Could you get, you know, Travis Kelsey plus a a late first? Could you maybe even pivot to Dalton Kincaid, who I think is probably in the similar value range to Sam Laporta, but get a decent asset on top? Those are the kind of moves I'm looking to make. But yeah, I, I just feel like there is so much risk around Sam Laporta and his current valuation. Do you agree, my boys? Do you agree, myself? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe. There'll be plenty more content coming your way.